All right, here we're going to start with our phone number. And for this scenario, we're going to use the last four digits of 4691. So first, let's talk about the number of flip-flops that we're going to need. Uh, you will always need 2 to the nth number of flip-flops. So we have four states, one, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and that means that we are going to need 2 squared, 2 to the 2, or 4. We're going to need, sorry, n number of flip-flops. We're going to need 2 flip-flops. If we had 8 of these out here, we would need 2 to the n, or we would need 2 to the third. We need three sets of flip-flops. But with four states, all we need is two flip-flops. So, uh, because we have two flip-flops, we're going to have two outputs. And we always call those outputs Q, so we're going to call it QA and QB. And I think you can figure out that in state one, QA and QB are going to be zero. And in state, or sorry, in state zero, that's going to be the case. In state one, QA and Q, uh, it's supposed to be a Q there, QB are, is going to be zero and one. Here in state two, QA, QB is one and zero. And finally, in our last state, I'm just going to abbreviate A and B, uh, we are one, one. So you see we just count through binary through our states. Um, that is just a placeholder to lock us into that state and then we can move through and we can get some different inputs and outputs at those states. So for this problem, there are really two inputs. One is a clock and there's always a clock with a state table or state diagram because we're using flip-flops and all flip-flops have a clock. That's just going to help us move forward and store that data. Uh, we really only have one input that's not a clock here. We're actually going to ignore the clock. It's not really going to influence our, our output here. It's just going to help with our timing. So our only input in this scenario is a button, and we're going to call it the enable button. And when that, that is enabled, um, when it's pressed, we will move to the next state. So if we think about that, when that is pressed, when enable is equal to 1, we move to the next state. So I write that right along this line, enable equals 1, enable equals 1, all the way around. Now if you're at state 0 here, and we didn't want to move, we wanted to stay right here, all we have to do is just not press that button. Just not press that button all the way around. So the same is true. This is a fairly simple state diagram. Now, there is like one more thing that we need to do here, and that is talk about our outputs. Um, oh, I guess I never even went and put in where our inputs were here, or where, what our numbers were. We're going to look to code in a 4 in this first one, a 6 in our second state, a 9 here in our third and our last state, we're going to encode a 1. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to pass out outputs in binary that correspond with each of these. So we're going to have an output here from state 1 and an output here from state 2 and so on and so forth. And if we want to encode a 4, we're going to use binary and binary for 4 is 1, one ah, is one zero zero. Binary for 6 is 1, 1, 0. Binary for 9, 1, 0, 1. And binary for 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Um, I added an extra 0 here for uh, my binary 1 because I'm going to need 4 uh, bits of data in order to pass that out. So I'm going to add a leading zero to these as well, just to make it, it even. So that is a state diagram for our phone number uh, circuit. Um, it's not too complex yet, but it is containing a lot of information. We have to decode that information. So here we go.